Hello everyone, today's video we'll be finishing up our brief series in the 737 as we take a look at the pitch modes of the automatic pilots. In uh, previous video we took a look at the roll modes which are really really solid. Now we're going to be taking a look at the modes that are controlled for making us go up and down. Now one of the things that makes the pitch modes a little more complicated than our friends the roll modes is the presence of the automatic throttle. Now the automatic throttle is a pretty cool tool. It uh, does some really really nice things as far as uh, making our life a little bit simpler. And uh, of course it also adds some complexity to things because it has has a massive impact on the performance of our pitch. And of course, depending on what mode you have, uh, you might have some interesting problems uh, ranging from, of course, uh, stalls all the way through, you know, uh, unpleasant angles that your passengers are not thrilled about. And, uh, like I say, that's part of the fun, part of the fun. So what we've done is we've just taken off from Providence there and uh, we have no autopilot modes on. The only thing I've got enabled actually right now is uh, we had uh, LNAV originally, but we can't actually use LNAV yet, but that's okay. And we're just making our initial climb out here, uh, heading up to a Bradley, a nice and short flight. Uh, we're looking at an 8,000 foot basically point where we're gonna be going. And then we're gonna kind of cruise on from there, sort of a deal. Nothing too, too crazy going on here. Like I said, pretty much, pretty typical flight here. So I'm gonna get this all nice and uh, squared away here, hold it at about, eh, looks pretty solid to me. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do something nice and scandalous and i'm gonna go ahead and uh activate the autopilots i'm gonna go ahead and uh, while that's going i'm gonna go answer her question right there red six four it's frequency change and one of the things you'll notice is because I had no modes armed up here, that we have this little warning here. First of all, we have a PRST mode. And the second thing you'll notice is we have this thing that says CWSP on it. What that means is we're in control wheel steering mode P for pitch. What that means is our pitch is now dampened. Uh, the best way to think of it is a uh, fly-by-wire. So if I were to go ahead and take my yoke right now and I were to push it forward a little bit, uh, let's see if we come down to, uh, we'll do seven and a half degrees. This seems pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and release. You will notice the aircraft will actually attempt to hold that pitch. Now, all my fun Airbus funds in the field out there will say, wait a minute, it's just like an Airbus. Yeah, there's a button for it. It's right over here. I call this Airbus mode. But you'll notice right now that it'll actually hold the particular pitch that I set it to. Now, if I pull up just a little bit more, I'll go to this particular position. Let's say I pull it up to uh, 12 and a half degrees here. Actually, that's pretty darn steep. <laughs> We're going uphill at an angle like that. Of course, you can see my uh, angle of attack is uh, slowly starting to hike up a little bit. We have a control wheel steering. But one of the things you probably observed is you see this big word that says arm on it. Uh, the other thing you probably notice is the fact that my aircraft is uh, just sort of happily kind of clanking along at climb power. It's actually at the same power that I had a moment ago. Now, a bunch of things happened all at the same time. The first thing you probably observed is the fact MCP speed was selected. Uh, that's going to refer to this speed that's in this little box here. I'm actually going to set this to 250. Second thing you'll notice is this is alt acquire. And this means that we have a captured our altitude. Now, the altitude we had selected here was actually 8,000 feet. So since we had selected that altitude, once we got close enough to it within 1,000 feet, you'll notice that the aircraft stepped in, took control from me, shut off control wheel steering mode, and then, of course, engaged all of its conventional altitude hold modes all pretty much at the same exact time to give you an idea exactly what that could look like. Now, the reason that happened, of course, is because we were on autopilot mode and we had auto throttle armed enabled, and that's why it snapped it out of my hand. Now, I originally set the throttle to take off power. You'll notice it dropped to climb power automatically. That's just the way that the system's actually engineered, which is kind of neat if you ask me. And you can see we're crawling up to 8,000 feet. And you're like, why are we crawling up to 8,000 feet? You were doing great a second ago. Ever since the autopilot took it out of your hands, it's not going so well. Well, the reason it's doing that is because that 1,000 feet basically enabled everything again. If I wanted to level off 8,000 feet in control wheel steering mode, I would have basically had to set a higher altitude and control wheel steered my way to victory, so to speak, as the height. So let's go ahead and take a look at our different modes here. So the basic modes we have here are level change, vertical nav mode, altitude hold mode, and vertical speed mode. Uh, most advanced, of course, we also have APP for approach, but we push that button a million times. The key things we need to know about here is, first of all, our VNAV mode requires us to have a targeted altitude. Now, the targeted altitude is based on your currently selected waypoint. So if I were to actually come down here and press my legs button, you'll notice my next waypoint is Hilfert, and it's 7562 feet. Uh, that's actually the desired altitude there. Normally, if we had a longer flight, this would actually be our desired cruise altitude. You know, if I were to go into my init ref here, go to my menu, FMC, oops, sorry, index. If we go down to my performance, uh, you'll notice our cruise altitude here is 8,000 feet. So normally that would say 8,000 feet, but that would be the target. 
Now, where VNAV gets interesting is on this aircraft, we can VNAV up and we can VNAV down. To VNAV up, of course, we have to have auto throttle, otherwise bad things will happen. And of course, to VNAV down, we can simply enable VNAV and select an altitude to the, that we want to set as our base. So for example, if I know my approach here is going to have an altitude of, let's call it 2,100 feet, is kind of that particular piece. Now, if I were to go ahead and um, select this and press VNAV, this aircraft would know that it's okay to descend. Now, one of the interesting things you noticed when I pressed this VNAV button is the fact this little panel here disappeared. It actually winked out. And the reason it winked out is because VNAV has a lot of control over this side of things as well as this side of things. Now, if I shut VNAV off, you'll notice my regular speed gets selected. It's going to yell at me. It's also going to give me a control wheel steering warning. So I can actually come over here and press altitude hold, which just says, hang on to the current altitude. Notice the difference between altitude hold and my current altitude. The aircraft doesn't dive down to 2,100 feet. Now, if I shut auto throttle off, you're going to get all sorts of, oh, <laughs> guess who left their throttle all the way up. Now, if I shut that off and I come over here and press VNAV, you're going to get a new thing that says VNAV path. The reason it says that is it will attempt to fly the appropriate path for the VNAV. So if we were to descend, for example, down to Hartford or descend down to Penna, for example, this aircraft would attempt to do so with no intervention of the thrust. That would mean that as the aircraft starts to sink, it's going to get a little fast. So that's just something you want to be mindful of. So I'm going to shut VNAV off, enable auto throttle here, and then I'm going to press the VNAV button again. Notice we get the VNAV path, but we also get FM speed selected to let us know that the computer is now controlling it. Is now in control of your thrust. So that's a very important thing to keep in mind whenever you're working with anything. Another common function on this little panel here, which is a super duper handy, of course, is the level change button. The purpose of level change is to allow you to change levels both up and down without changing your speed. Uh, this is a very, very useful tool. For example, let's say I want to do a, a float down to uh, 7,000. Ah, we got to go a little further than that. Let's jump up to 10,000 feet real quick, which uh, is a bad idea for a flight this close. So I'm going to go 10,000 feet, disengage VNAV real quickly. Notice it's got a select speed down. And I'm going to go ahead and press level change. Now, this is going to create an interesting thing. You'll notice here that the N1 light comes on. You'll also notice that this is going to call up the selected power setting. Our selected power setting right now is cruise. So our aircraft is going to spin up cruise power pretty much right away, which is 90.3%. And you're also going to notice a bunch of things happen. Um, you're going to notice right here where it says indicated airspeed that this number is going to stay pretty close to constant. This is going to start climbing because now we're adding thrust. And you're going to notice that this number and this number now match. Now, if I were to come here and reduce this number a little tiny bit here, I'll say 240, what you'll observe is the pitch of the plane will come up as you can see clearly here and you'll see the airspeed drops because this is the new desired speed that we wish to climb at. Notice by the way when we get within a thousand feet it's going to give us that little holler and it's going to start kind of sinking its fingers into the controls again here. You'll notice that my engines are automatically spooling down again because of auto thrust selected. You also can auto throttle rather and you can also see here that it's trying to maintain that speed. Now if Light level change is kind of a neat tool, and I'll show you why. Let's say I want to descend at 250 knots here, and I want to come down to, uh, let's do 5,000 feet. Let's be uh, downright scandalous here. Now, if I were to come in here and go ahead and press flight level change again, you're going to notice that the engines are going to throttle themselves down. This makes sense, uh, because we, if we go full thrust, obviously we're not going to have as much vertical speed. But one of the fun toys that you have here is if you add drag to your descent in the form of speed brakes. So if I were to grab my speed brakes, not my flaps, uh, that'd be pretty scandalous on my part. Go ahead and pull that thing in. I'll pull that to the uh, flight detent there. Oh no, they changed my speed brake. Uh, they changed my speed brakes button. Ah oh, well. So if I were to put out my speed brakes, of course, uh, that would enable me to approach a little bit steeper here. Ah, there's always that one button I forget to check uh, whenever I do videos, but that's okay. So what you would do is you pop out your speed brakes and to make the aircraft uh, come down quite a bit steeper. And again, the reason it would do that is on account of the fact that uh, you're coming in on quite a bit, um, like I said, quite a bit more drag. So it would be a little more aggressive. Oh, there it goes. Now it's working. Ah, whatever. I'm not going to mess with it. I think you get the idea. So the other advantage we have too, other than the fact that my pressurization system's yelling at me because I started descending right away, is we have the other option to go ahead and use vertical speed. Now, one thing I want to say is whenever you get everything squared away the way you want it, if you ever shut off a particular mode, you will automatically flip over to control wheel steering, which will maintain whatever you left it at. So if I left this level with this power setting, you'll notice I'm going to proceed down to that specific altitude. Remember from before, though, because this is on and because we're armed, which is what this text here says, we will capture it. Now, the interesting thing is if you try to change this right now upwards, the moment we cross the two with each other, you will instantly level off at that altitude. Now, one of the cool tricks we can actually do here, which I think is really, really cool, is I'm actually going to arm speed, and I'm also going to altitude hold. 
Now altitude hold will attempt to hold the altitude that you just pressed the altitude hold button at. Uh, the other thing you're going to observe too is because we have auto throttle on, you'll notice MCP speed instantly came on here. I can't talk today. And of course, it's going to try to hold 250. And it's since we have the thrust all set, it's going to basically hang on to that for us. And it's off we go kind of a thing. We've got a bit of an angle of attack issue here, but <laughs> I'm not too, too worried about that. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and press this button, the Alt Int V button. So this particular button is interesting. Now, what this button does is it's going to tell the system to ignore uh, what you had for the next lowest altitude. So for example, if we were trapped at 8,000 feet because uh, they put us at 8,000 feet in Hartford, if I pressed this button, it would delete that altitude so that the aircraft could continue its descent downward. It's kind of a neat little button that uh, we can use for that particular purpose. And it can be very, very helpful depending on. I always like to say, if for some reason your plane levels that off at 12,000 when you're supposed to be descending, double check to see if you have an altitude constraint and then double check that you can violate it but the moment you bop that button it would go ahead and continue its descent downward now one of the cool things here is if i come over here and i shut off altitude hold mode you expect the plane to continue to descend it doesn't instead what it does is switch back to control wheel steering mode and it's going to holler at you so the last mode we're going to take a look at is vertical speed mode. Now, in the old days, this was my favorite button in the universe. So I push this button, and it's going to allow you to, to specify a specific speed. So for example, if I use negative numbers, and I'm going to do 500 feet per minute, for example, you'll notice the aircraft starts flying towards 5,000 feet at the desired vertical speed. Now, one of the really, really nice things here is because I have automatic throttle on, it's going to actually maintain the speed as it descends or as it ascends. And now the reason that's really, really helpful to us is if we didn't do that, and we pull the throttle back, our aircraft is going to get really, really slow. Now, of course, people say, what is an appropriate uh, vertical speed here? And of course, if you go back to the old flight sim days, you'll notice that 1800 feet is the magical speed there, if you're kind of curious about that particular effect. So as you can see, uh, there's a lot of really, really good stuff built into these. And by combining the roll modes with the pitch modes, you have an enormous amount of control of what your aircraft is doing in the air at any given time. You know, at any point, if I need to improvise for something, I can just quickly go, OK, is this an up or down issue or is this a left or right kind of an issue? And of course, I can fly completely without the aid of the FMS, completely conventionally with having all these really, really great modes. Uh, the only mode you really don't get if you don't set up the FMS, of course, is going to be our friend, the VNAV mode. Uh, we can still technically we wouldn't have lateral no and I apologize if you have no waypoints you get no lateral nav either but we could literally do VOR lock plus all these normal functions for that particular purpose the last thing we're going to say uh, as we continue descending down here towards Hartford for like the 50th time is of course uh, what this lovely n1 versus speed button does and without getting too too complicated speed tries to hold the speed here N1 tries to hold the selected thrust. Uh, the reason that's really, really helpful to us is that knowing that particular piece of information makes it a little bit easier for us uh, when we're planning approaches and things like that. If I were to use my climb power now, it would actually be giving me my cruise power because of the way that I have that set. Now, if I say maintain a specific speed, it's going to try to hold the speed limited by the power rather than just give me all the power we got kind of a thing. So if you want to imagine how frustrating that can be, imagine if you ordered up a level change with speed mode enabled. Um, that would create a bit of an interesting problem because, of course, the aircraft would be trying to speed up and slow down and trying to ascend and descend, and it creates a nice little uh, conglomeration of problems that uh, does not end well. Uh, the last thing I will say, as always, is uh, people always wonder what happens if you press control wheel steering when everything else is on. So one of the first things that's going to happen, by the way, is if you push that button, you're going to get an alarm. If you just press CWS, one of the things you'll notice is all the modes actually maintain themselves. But the difference, of course, is you have this lovely, lovely control wheel steering mode, plus the assistance of the automatic thrust there, or the auto throttle, I should say. It's not automatic thrust on a Boeing. All in one combined package. Now, the cool thing, of course, is if I want to switch from CWS over to CMD, I can just shut it off and push it, and then I'm on my way. Enjoy.